Making statements is kind of easy. In fact, you might have friends that are rather bold in the statements they make. They might say that Brazilian soccer is better than German soccer, or that homeschooling one's children is better than sending them to public schools. But it's one thing to make claims, and it's another to back them up with reasons. And reasonable people back up their claims with reasons. And they're aware of how well those reasons support their claims. So in this segment, we're going to look at those reasons, reasons that we call arguments. I'm going to talk about several topics regarding arguments. Validity, what it is, five valid forms of arguments, two formal fallacies, and how soundness differs from validity. All right, so let's look at what an argument is. It's two or more statements in which one of the statements is supported by the other statement or the other statements. That statement is the conclusion. The ones that support are called the premises. A valid argument is one in which the premises entail the conclusion. Or in other words, the conclusion must be true if the premises are true. I'm going to show you five valid forms of argument. But let's get some statements on the board. Hal cheers, Meg hits, Ted dances, and Amy sings. We'll call them P, Q, R, and S. So what's a valid argument? If you said an argument in which the conclusion must be true if the premises are, you'd be right. So much for validity. The first form of valid argument goes like this. Let's say the first premise is, if Meg hits, then Hal cheers, and then you assert that Meg hits. Well, then you can infer that Hal cheers. If P, then Q, P, therefore Q. It's a valid form. It's called modus ponens. You assert that P, which is sufficient for Q, and then infer Q. Next example. If Meg hits, then Hal cheers. Hal does not cheer. Therefore, Meg does not hit. If P, then Q, not Q, therefore not P. It's called modus tollens. You're denying a necessary condition for P, and so you infer not P. Meg hits or how cheers. Meg does not hit. Therefore, how cheers. That's P or Q, not P, therefore Q. It's called a disjunctive syllogism. You are presented with two disjuncts and you deny one of them, so you can infer the other one. Okay, let's stick with our first premise. Meg hits or Hal cheers, and then add, if Meg hits, then Amy sings. If Hal cheers, then Ted dances. And then we infer... Amy sings or Ted dances. P or Q, if P then R, if Q then S, therefore R or S. It's a valid form called a dilemma. Last one. If Meg hits, then Hal cheers. If Hal cheers, then Amy sings. And then we infer, if Meg hits, then Amy sings. The form is if P then Q, if Q then R, therefore if P then R. It's a valid form called a hypothetical syllogism. P is sufficient for Q, Q is sufficient for R, so P is sufficient for R. Why is modus ponens a valid form of argument? If you said because it asserts a sufficient condition for the consequent, you'd be right. Let's look at two invalid forms of argument. These are called formal fallacies. If Meg hits, then Hal cheers. If I then say, Hal cheers, can I infer that Meg hits? No, I cannot. Not validly. This is called affirming the consequent, the fallacy of affirming the consequent. Q is a necessary condition for P. Asserting it is not sufficient to infer P, the antecedent. 
All right, let's change it. The second premise says Meg does not hit. Can we infer that Hal does not cheer? No, we're denying the antecedent in this case. The antecedent is a sufficient condition for the consequent. There might be other sufficient conditions that could bring it about. Denying it is not enough to know that the consequent won't follow. Okay, let's change the example. If the car runs, it has fuel. The car has fuel. Is it safe then to infer that the car runs? No, it's not safe to infer that because there could be other conditions that are necessary for the car's running. So this is a fallacy of affirming the consequent. If I assert that the car does not run, can I assert that the car has no fuel? No, I can't assert that because, at least validly, denying the antecedent is denying a sufficient condition and there might be other sufficient conditions that could bring about the consequent. All right, so let's review. The valid forms are if P then Q, P therefore Q, modus ponens. If P then Q, not Q, therefore not P, modus tollens. P or Q, not P, therefore Q, disjunctive syllogism. If P then Q, if Q then R, therefore if P then R, hypothetical syllogism. P or Q, if P then R, if Q then S, therefore R or S, dilemma. Those are the valid forms. The invalid deductive forms are if P then Q, not P, therefore not Q, denying the antecedent. And if P then Q, Q, therefore P, affirming the consequent. All seven are deductive forms, five of them valid, two of them invalid. Why is affirming the consequent an invalid form of argument? The answer is that the consequent is a necessary condition, not a sufficient condition for the antecedent. Turning now to soundness, an argument is sound if and only if two conditions hold. First, the argument is valid. Second, the premises of the argument are true. This means that in a valid but not sound argument, the premises need not be true. Okay, let's get a, an example. Let's say a coyote howls, and then your friend says, the howl came from Fido or Sasquatch. In fact, the howl came from a coyote. And then your friend asserts that the howl did not come from Fido. So the howl must have come from Sasquatch. Now, this is actually a valid argument. It's a disjunctive syllogism. However, it's not a sound argument because the first premise is false. The howl came from a coyote, and that's not one of the options in the first premise. So a sound argument has to have true premises as well as being valid. So why are some valid arguments not sound? Answer, because they do not have true premises. So much for soundness. We've now considered some important forms of argument, five valid forms of argument in particular, We've also seen a couple of fallacies. Those are bad arguments that we shouldn't use. And we've considered the importance of the truth of one's premises so that we can form not only arguments that are valid, but arguments that are sound. And sound arguments are the best arguments there are.